Hello friends, in today's session we begin our discussion on current affairs with a visit to the West Indies. Now, this question is about CARICOM members and uh, recently our foreign minister who we call the, the ministry is called external affairs minister, ministry. Subramanian Jayashankar recently co-chaired the fourth India CARICOM ministerial meeting in Guyana's capital, Georgetown. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these are the countries in the Caribbean community, but uh, more importantly, let me give you a lowdown before I tell you a little more about this region. CARICOM, the full form is Caribbean community. Let me write it here. Caribbean community. Caribbean community. That's a full form. Second, uh, founded 1973, 1973, founded 1973, 15 members. Next, uh, Secretary General, Secretary General, Carla Barnett of Belize. This is Belize. Okay, Belize. Belize is a country in Central America and uh, this is a part of the Caribbean community. I guess, and last point, economic and political integration. Um, sorry. Economic and political union, economic and political union, not strictly speaking union, but yes, they have come together to form one particular community. They, they don't have common currency. They don't have, you know, each um, uh, member here has no sovereign control over the others, but it's more of a political economic union. Fair? Now, let me tell you what is exactly is Caribbean. Caribbean by the way, this is the US, so this is North America, okay, it is entirely North. Some people call this particular part from here as South America, Central America till Mexico is Central America, till the US border, uh, Mexican border with US is Central America, and then of course people say that this is South America. Um, but I would look at it this way, this is South America and this entire region is, you know, what we call North America. So Belize is in North America, okay? Now, this region you see here, it's called the Caribbean Sea. This water body is called the Caribbean Sea. Caribs, C-A-R-I-B-S, is the name of an ethnic group here. What is it? Ethnic group, E-T-H-N-I-C. An ethnic group is a group of people who have more or less a common culture, a common way of life, a, you know, uh, they have similar customs and traditions. When I say almost uh, as similar, they don't mean exactly the same. Uh, it means it, they are not the ex exactly the same across the territory. But yes, they differ a bit here and there, but more or less a common way of life. Okay. Now, um, these people are spread across these islands. You can see here plenty of islands here, and there are about 13 sovereign countries, 12 dependencies. I mean countries that depend on other countries, like Jamaica is a part of the British Empire. It's, it's an independent country, but the head of the state of Jamaica is the British monarch. Okay, now let me take you further on this. Um, um, you know, when we look at, you no, know, I was just looking at this particular map and I'm fascinated by all these kinds of places. I have always loved geography because I believe that geography is the greatest determinant of history. All history is a function of geography. And you could look at this. Um, see, the first time Caribbean, uh, first time Christopher Columbus came was to come here. He came to the Bahamas. He came to one of these places, okay, this group of islands, and um, he made three more visits. So it was not just once that. Christopher Columbus had come to, you know, um, the Americas. He had come here four times. Now, one more thing you need to appreciate is this, that he had come here and uh, to this part, to this part and all. You know, he thought he had reached India. So he called this place Indy and he called the locals Indians. Okay. 
Now, later on subsequent voyages, it was found that these islands were not India. This entire territory, this set of islands were not India. So, subsequently, these islands came to be called West Indies because this is located west of India. That's why West Indies. Okay. Now, even this may seem a little bit improbable, but that's a story. Okay. Let me take you further on this. So, if you look at this word Caribs, we said that it comes from the ethnic group and E-A-N in the end of a word means water body. What is it? Water body. The sea or the Caribs is called Caribbean Sea. Okay. Now, let me take you further again. I mean, when I, if I say let me take you further, I, I just want you to know a little more about this. See, so many islands here. The, you must have heard of Cuba. Yeah, this is Cuba. This is, uh, you know, the, you know, on the eastern side is the Dominican Republican country. It's a country of Dominican Republic and this is Haiti. This is one of the poorest countries in the world, probably the poorest in Western Hemisphere. And it's an extremely dangerous place right now. And uh, if you look at the other places here, you know, Antigua and Barbuda, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, you know, you must have heard of this cricket, you know, cricket, you know, West Indies cricket team. And since there is no country called West Indies, all these islands came together to form one cricket board and consequently a cricket team. That's ladies, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, West Indies, the West Indies. So there is no country called West Indies, but it's a group of islands, independent countries, sometimes dependencies. When you say dependency, it's a part of a, you know, another country or where the major power, the overall power is in the hands of the major power there. Now, um, let me take you to these places here. You see, Nassau is the capital of Bahamas. So I'll just tell you, Nassau is the capital of Bahamas. This is Bahamas, okay. Georgetown, we mentioned that it's the capital of, what is that place? Uh, uh, Georgia, yeah, Gu sorry, uh, <laughs> Guyana, this is Guyana, okay. And this is Suriname, and this is French Guyana. This is France. French Guyana is not an overseas territory, it is actually territory of France. So France is the only European country to be present physically in South America, okay. Now let me take you to Kingston. Kingston is the capital of Jamaica. Okay. Cuba is where you find Havana. And of course, Porto Prince is the capital of Haiti. H-A-I-T-I. One of the world's, as I said, most dangerous places. I follow these countries on a regular basis. I can tell you there is utter lawlessness in Haiti. Nearly 45% of the country's territory is under the control of criminal gangs. Yes, criminal gangs control the, you know, the country. The acting prime minister and the acting president is the same guy, Ariel Henry, but he has no control basically. Hmm? So, we are deepening our relationship with this. Now, why, why would we be interested in these kinds of islands? These kinds of countries there are two reasons one is strategic in the sense that um, you know these countries have a vote in the UN and we require votes you understand it to get our people elected to global bodies and second in case there is a vote that we seek on some major issue international issue then we would require their vote as well isn't it now one more another reason I said is one is strategic second is um, uh, we have historical ties to this place. Why would we have historical ties? See, in 1806, Britain abolished slavery. Britain abolished slavery. But Britain had colonies all over the world. So they needed people to work in these places. They needed people to work in these places. And uh, who better than the people in the colonies or in the territories that Britain had controlled at that time? See, in 1806, by, the, by 1806, Britain had lost the United States, which had declared independence 30 years earlier. But then these colonies needed people. The locals couldn't be trusted much. So Indians were taken away. The East India Company, which was ruling large parts of India at this time, had pushed Indians into bonded labor. And some people of, of, of their own choices, they entered into contract with the British, you know, the East India Company, took some money and came here. 
but most of them were bonded laborers okay they could not pay some debt or anything they had to come here they were put on ships so from the hindi heartland of uttar pradesh bihar madhya pradesh um people were taken to mauritius people were taken brought here as well where the caribbean and all these places uh tamil nadu people from tamil nadu were taken to singapore okay malaysia and um some people were taken from the hindi heartland were taken to Ma- maldives uh not maldives mauritius and then fiji which is in the northeast of uh, australia now take take it further you know from gujarat people were taken to uganda you know with very britain ran a colony sugar plantations the people needed to you know people needed were, were needed as labor you know a lot of these guys went overseas but in 1810 in 1900 given that they were very poor and means of communication were meager people could not come back people could not come back they settled there these people are persons of indian origin persons of indian origin so you find trinidad and tobago a lot of indians are there not exactly indians but indians of persons of indian origin you have this ipl cricketer sunil narayan sunil narayan comes from he is his four fathers came from india but he is a west indian now the idea that you look at his name otherwise how come these people people in the caribbean would have indian names yeah so you know uh, these are persons of indian origin essentially there are two kinds of indians who live abroad one is a pio the other is a nri an nri is a non resident indian who was born in india so is a citizen of india but who is born abroad but who is born abroad i'm so sorry who lives abroad i'm so sorry a uh, an nri non resident indian the name says that is a, was born in india citizen of india but resides abroad okay non resident but a person of indian origin is a per, you know, is one who was born abroad is a citizen abroad but whose forefathers were born in our country that's a person of indian origin so sunil narayan is pio is pio i received feedback our you know our students people like you who are watching this show this um, class uh, had written to us at info@timeforeducation.com you mailed us that uh, earlier i used to tell stories in my classes and i had stopped them uh, you know narrating stories so i today brought in a short story how indians are there everywhere in the world if you look at fiji 37% of country the fijian population is of indian origin yes hmm 34% is of indian origin you will find indians everywhere in the world okay you will find the mauritius is prime minister is pravind jugnath pravind jugnath so these guys uh, seychelles has a president whose name is um, ram kalavan ram kalavan so unless we read a bit about these kinds of people or these kinds of places or these kinds of policies we would be that much more, more familiar you know why uh, why are we going to have a, a ministerial meeting with let's say the caricom caribbean community so a little more here you can see here this is cuba this is cuba and here let me tell you one more story guys be patient you see this here this region is where you have what is called uh, the guantanamo bay guantanamo bay america has see what's a bay a bay like the bay of bengal now bay of, bay of bengal you have i'm just this is an outline huh? this is not true basically this is a bay of bengal isn't it a bay of bengal the bay of bengal is situated in the east of india now remember one thing that um, when we are looking at a bay it's a water body that is surrounded by land on three sides sand land on three sides open only on one side that's a bay look at this peninsula a land a land body or a territory surrounded by water on three sides a bay is a water body surrounded by land on three sides okay 
So the Guantanamo Bay is here. This is where the Americans have a naval base. Americans have a naval base here. Okay. Uh, you need to understand the Americans have a naval base here. Why do they have a naval base here? Maybe some other time I'll tell you the story. Even though Cuba is a sworn enemy of America, you know, um, the Americans have a naval base here. Maybe I'll tell you the story later. Hmm? Whom the following are the recipients of the Goldman Environmental Prize 2023, the world's most prestigious environmental prize. All of these guys are winners of the Goldman Environmental Prize. Why is it called Goldman Environmental Prize? You just write this and I'll give you a couple of points. Okay. Uh, one, nicknamed Green Nobel. Green Nobel. So it's called the Green Nobel. Okay. You can write it with it like this also. No harm. Absolutely harm. There are two spellings. This is the more accepted spelling. Green Nobel. And the second one is, of course, uh, founded by, founded by, Richard and Rhonda Goldman in 1989, I think, yeah, 1989, yeah. Richard and the Rhonda Goldman in 1989. Okay. Hmm. I'm not going to get into why have they won. Please look up and find out. World Creativity and Innovation Day is celebrated annually on DASH to raise awareness about the crucial role that innovation and creativity play in human development. April 21st. April 21st is also the National Civil Services Day. National Civil Services Day. You could write this National Civil Services Day. Okay, yeah, National Civil Services Day. Um, let me tell you a bit more, no? Why just restrict ourselves with uh, two, 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 with a couple of choices? Why don't we look at a few more important days in April? This is the way we can learn more. This is where I come in to add value rather than just tell you, okay, Nassau is the capital of Bahamas or Georgetown's uh, the capital of Guyana. A little more, my friends. Mm -hmm. So right, um, April fifth, April fifth. National Maritime Day. National Maritime. You all April, so National Maritime Day. Next, April 7th, World Health Day. World Health Day. April 10th. World Homeopathy Day. World Homo Homeopathy Day. Next. April 13th. April 13th. Jallian Wala Bag. Janiel Jallian Wala Bag. Massacre Day. More than 1500 people were shot dead by the British in cold blooded fashion, my friends. April 13th. Then April 14th, Prem Divas, which is the birthday of Baba Saheb Ambedkar. Hmm? Next, National Civil Services Day. Yeah, April 22nd. We can take one more. April 22nd. Earth Day, Earth Day, you can write a couple of more, no? April 24th, April 24th, April 24th, uh, what is that? National Panchayat Day, National Panchayat Day, National Panchayat Day. Then April 26th, World Intellectual Property Day, 
वर्ल्ड इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी डे वर्ल्ड इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी डे एर वी गो वी कैन राइट वन मोर अप्रैल ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ वर्ल्ड मलेरिया डे वर्ल्ड मलेरिया डे अप्रैल ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ Since we are in April, let's complete the circle with the last one. April thirtieth, April thirtieth, three zero. Aishman Bharat Divas. Aishman Bharat Divas. Aishman Bharat Divas. Who has become the first woman Indian Air Force officer to receive a gallantry award? That is uh, Wing Commander Deepika Mishra, an extraordinarily brave, uh, you know, uh, military person. And um, what she has won? Why did she win the Vayu Sena Medal? In August 2021, there were massive floods in North Madhya Pradesh. So. while it was raining heavily and everything a lot of help could not reach the people who were being who were impacted deeply who were caught in floods and all who were looking who were struggling to stay afloat wing commander dipika mishra flew a helicopter and she was probably the only person who could reach that place and she saved 47 you know civilians and in for her act of extraordinary courage she has been given the vayu sena madam yeah amazing isn't it who is the indian air force chief vivek ram choudhary air marshal air chief marshal vivek ram choudhary so indian air force air chief marshal is vivek ram choudhary which institution released the world development report 2023 migrants refugees and societies the world bank i went through this uh, report and i found this to be pretty pretty good i mean it makes for hard breaking reading in some places but overall it's data rich and uh, what i found was that there are 18.4 crore people okay 18.4 crore people who live outside the home of their national it means they live beyond you know in some other country 18.4 crore migrants and most of these guys nearly you know i would say more than 50% live in low and middle income countries middle income countries so many migrants man isn't it it's tragic why do people leave people leave in search of better opportunities employment opportunities for uh, because of religious persecution sect you know sectarian persecution like the shias in pakistan are running away to iran and other other places where they can find some safe safe haven h a v e n which means shelter okay um if you look at um, you know uh, uh, climate change yes climate change is pushing um cli- you know migration in a very very big way a lot of freak weather is happening in different parts of the world flash floods you know very wet summers very cold dry winters which also mean that you know uh, winters are harsh but there is no you know water and everything and that also has is impacting um uh, you know uh, the flora fauna agriculture uh, consequently of which humans are leaving the places you know they 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 reside in they were living in to places where they can find better opportunities better you could say better quality of life and one more thing is winters are not just being cold in some parts of the world they are also being very warm they are also being very warm in some places so warm winters would mean that crops go bad just like in cold you know in in summer also cold summers you know things are pretty bad in large parts of the world so migrants move inwards one place to another that puts a lot more pressure on resources in other place now look at rising sea levels could put a lot of pressure in india my friends India's coastline is very long, and there are major cities on the coast. Uh, Mumbai, you have you know Porbandar, Mumbai, you have Arunachalam, yeah, 
Panji, Panjim, uh, Trivandrum or Tiruvanthapuram. Then you have uh, Tutikorin, you Chennai, Vishakapatnam, and all these places. So rising sea levels would push people in, into the you know hinterland, which would put a lot more pressure in these places. So there is internal migration, and sometimes there is external migration. Yeah. Things are pretty bad in large parts of the world, my friends, because of freak weather, changing climates, and um, we don't know what more. Yeah. Civil war, wars between nations, they also push migration out. So there are a lot of factors, not just economic opportunities and climate change. Um, world, I'll just give you the head offices. This time, only the head offices. World Trade Organization, Geneva in Switzerland. Both World Bank and IMF are in uh, Washington DC, Washington DC, District of Columbia, United States, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, Beijing, China, Asian Development Bank, Manila, Philippines. Okay. Jaydeep Mukherjee recently launched his autobiography titled Cross Court. He is a renowned former tennis player. He represents India in multiple tournaments, Dennis Davis Cup and everything. And one more thing you need to know is that he won the Arjuna Award in 1966. 1966 Arjuna Award. This is uh, the great Ramanathan Krishnan. Ramanathan Krishnan. At one point, he was ranked world number three, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, three or four. Changlang District received the Prime Minister's Award for Excellence in Public Administration for its innovative New Age Learning Center. Changlang, this is Changlang. Yeah, this is Changlang. And this is in one of India's easternmost districts. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Arunachal Pradesh. This is in Arunachal Pradesh. Mm. Arunachal Pradesh, how big is this state? Mm. This is about 83,000 square kilometers, 83.7 thousand square kilometers. If you take 84,000 square kilometers, the population is about 14 lakhs. A little less than 40, 14 lakhs, but yeah, 14 lakhs. Which also makes it the most sparsely populated, with least densely populated state in India. The density of population is just 17 persons per square kilometers. Yes, total population 14 lakh divided by total area 83 or 84,000 square kilometers. You get nearly 17 kilo, you know persons per square kilometers. That would mean it, this becomes India's most sparsely populated or least densely populated state. Okay. Who is the Chief Minister of Arunachal Pradesh? Pema Khandu. Pema Khandu. Yeah, that's the Chief Minister. Chala. Since I mentioned Chief Minister, I'll bring in the Mijoram as well. Who Zoran Thanga, Assam, Himanta, Himanta, Biswa Sharma, Nagaland, Nifu Rio, Meghalaya, Conrad Sangma. Sangma. Parkash Singh Badal. Parkash Singh Badal, who died recently, was a five time chief minister of Punjab. When was he the chief minister? Ah, I was quite taken aback. You don't have to write this, but yeah, if you are interested, chief minister between 1970 71, um, 78 to, to 1980. Okay, not exactly 78, 77, 
70 to 70 you know 80 then uh, one more time here become when first the tube here then the nda was there 1997 to 2000 then 2007 to 2017 yeah so overall here there are two terms basically so essentially five times four time uh, you know uh, five times rather once twice th thrice four and five times yeah and he was also the union minister at one point uh, he was the union minister for agriculture and farmers welfare agriculture and farmers welfare hmm haryana's chief minister is manohar lal khattar uttarakhand pushkar singh dhami rajasthan ashok gehlot charkhand hemant soren according to sipri which is the stockholm stockholm is the capital of sweden stockholm international peace research institute i repeat international peace research institute so so stockholm international peace research institute comes out with an annual report yeah on global military state of affairs and um, the country with the highest percentage increase in military expenditure over previous year has been ukraine they spent over 640 billion dollars or about 34 percent of their gdp one third of their gdp went in building defense spending defense spending because they are they believe that they are under attack by russia so there is this conflict in russia and uh, ukraine i will not get into the conflict but we'll stick to the agenda here you could write stockholm report oh, sorry sipri report sipri report sipri report sipri report and uh, underline that first global military expenditure global military expenditure global military expenditure global military expenditure in 2022 in 2022 2200 billion dollars Two thousand two hundred billion dollars. You know what? Thousand billion makes one trillion, so it is two point two trillion. Some places you may find trillion. Hmm? This is a global expenditure. Of this, you write top four. We'll write top four. We'll end at top four because fourth is in India. One, United States. Eight hundred and seventy-seven billion dollars. Eight hundred and seventy seven billion dollars. Second, China, two ninety two billion dollars. Three, I repeat, um, US, China, and three is Russia. Oh, yes, Russia. How do we pronounce it? Russia yeah okay you can just write 86 here you don't need decimals fourth is India our country spent how much 81 billion dollars last year 81 billion dollars 81 billion dollars okay Channel. hey we can write one more we can write about um, ukraine but you know this entire conflict that russia uh, has with ukraine also has pushed ukrainian military expenditure in one year they have spent 
44 billion dollars which is phenomenally large for a country like ukraine because it's a tiny country okay second thing this 44 percent represents an increase of 640 percent this is single biggest increase in annual military expenditure in the case of any country ever okay see we may you know some countries may spend three minute three percent more four percent more ten percent more fifteen percent but in the case of ukraine it's been 640 percent yeah it's almost six and a half times more than its actual budget yeah. Now, one more thing you see is that $877 billion in the case of US represents 39% of global military expenditure. So, whatever the global military expenditure is, that you know, $2,200 billion of that $877 billion represents 39%, my friends. Huge. 40% is just one country. But do you see the number for China, $292 billion? Now, it may seem like you know, pretty large, but you know, this is actually what China says officially. So officially China says $292 billion is what we are spending. But as someone who has thought about China for a long, long time, and I can tell you one thing, that China is a country you cannot trust, okay? China could be spending nearly $500 billion on defense, my friends. Yes, I'm not kidding. More than 500, I would say, yeah. Though officially they say it's nearly $300 billion. China is not a country you can trust. By which year is the Minister of Home Affairs planning to make India drugs free? 2047. That would be the 100th year of our independence. And ladies and gentlemen, we need to appreciate the fact that, you know, this is a very, very ambitious target. It's very difficult to make a country, a society drugs free given that the incidence of drug addiction is going up in some parts of the country. Yeah. Who is the Minister of um, Home Affairs in India? The Union Minister of Home Affairs is uh, Amit Shah. Amit Shah. Identify the correct statements regarding the recently conducted first ever census of water bodies across the country. You see this year, one, uh, the census was conducted by the Ministry of Jal Shakti. Yes. All of them are right. About 24 lakh, 24.24 lakh, 24.24. Yeah. Um, over 24 lakh water bodies have been, you know, enum enumerated, evaluated, of which uh, 23 lakh are in rural areas, uh, just a little over 69,000 are in urban areas. Yeah. Um, some are tanks, some are ponds, and um, if you look at man-made there are way too many man-made lakes ponds you know than natural ones yeah it's three to four three three to four in fact you know three-fourths of all water bodies of 24.24 lakh water bodies are man-made hmm. and um, i guess that should be it yeah you don't need to struggle here but we could write something more who is the Union Minister of Jal Shakti, Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. Gajendra Singh Shekhawat. Okay. And second thing. He also holds another ministry, food processing industries, food processing industries, food processing industries. Okay. Who among the following tennis players defended his title at the 2023 Barcelona Open? This is Alcaraz. He's from Spain. He's from Spain. Barcelona is in Spain. This is this guy is from Spain. Okay, uh, he defeated the Greek fellow Tsitsipas. Stefanos Tsitsipas lost to Carlos Alcaraz in the final of the 2023 Barcelona Open. ATP stands for Association of Tennis Professionals. Association of Tennis Professionals. 
okay this is only for men so this series is for men only basically now look at these two they are the winners of the doubles title doubles title they won the doubles title at um, Barcelona Open and both of them belong to Argentina Argentina the eighth largest country in the world by area following India in the seventh place is Argentina and you see this here this is a Nike logo isn't it this is called swoosh it's called swoosh it was designed by a person named Caroline Davidson don't worry swoosh is the name of the logo Mohammad Shahabuddin he is a new president of Bangladesh. Pakistan Prime Minister is Shahbaj Sharif. Shahbaj Sharif. Maldives. Ibrahim Mohammad Sole. Ibrahim Mohammad Sole. Bangladesh. We know Indonesia President Joko Widodo, Malaysia Anwar Ibrahim, Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, Anwar Ibrahim. Okay, now I'll tell you something about this uh, Malaysia. Malaysia has an elected monarch. Yes, yes. From large countries, this is the only major country in the world with an elected monarch. Usually, monarch comes to the a monarch comes to the office of the head of state as a hereditary thing. I mean, it's a legacy issue from one generation to another kind of thing. But in the case of Malaysia, there is a you know, council of rulers, nine rulers, council of rulers. There are nine chota chota kingdoms in Malaysia, nine small kingdoms. They have a small council. And one of these councils, one of the council members, see the council comprises the rulers of the nine kingdoms. And one of them becomes the monarch of Malaysia on a rotation basis, on a rotation basis, five year term. Okay, so it has an elected monarchy. That's an interesting thing about Malaysia. Name the operation launched by the government of India to evacuate its nationals from conflict on Sudan. Operation Kaveri. Now, the situation is unfolding in this country. So, I'm going to tell you a bit about this. Um, but the entire story will come in the next class. I'll bring this question as the first question and I'll tell you a lot more about this. Because things are quite fluid, you know, at the time, at this time. This is one of the very few countries um, that um, I have written extensively on. Sudan, especially that region here, Darfur. You know, I, I wrote this um, a, a very extensive article on this region in 2005. Sudan. What is this um, thing about Sudan? Sudan, my friends, is... Um, this country in Africa, right below Egypt. This is Egypt. This is Eritrea, Ethiopia, South Sudan. This was part of Sudan. This entire country from here till here was one country till 2011. In July 2011, southern part of the country broke away from Sudan and became South Sudan. It's also deeply violent. Then there is Chad here, Libya here. This is violent, this is violent. Yeah, this is an extremely dangerous place for any person who goes who goes against the government there. Yeah. So they are all surrounded by violent countries. Egypt is a bit stable here, yeah, because it's ruled by a dictator. So Sudan's capital is Khartoum. What is it? Khartoum. That's the capital. Okay. I'll tell you this entire story in the next class, but let me bring in Khartoum and the president of the country. Acting president is a guy called Abdel Fateh. Abdel Fateh Al Burhan. 
okay you could also write chief of chief of sudanese sudanese armored forces armored forces sudanese armored forces so they are in conflict with a group called the rapid support forces in short rapid support forces led by the spelling of mohammed is different here mohammed um hamdati which means warlord mohammed hamdati dagalo hmm so there is a conflict between the rsf and the sudanese armed forces the conflict and everything as i told you i will discuss in great detail in the next class just like we discuss west indies and all that yeah i'll tell you a story so why sudan today is extremely dangerous even the, even for the people living there forget people about you know like people like us who, you know uh, you know who are far away uh, because the 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 conflict in sudan has the potential to spill into the region basically the entire region there hmm? but let let's discuss this in the next session kaveri because uh, this is the river kaveri it's named after the river kaveri in south india uh, which flows through karnataka and uh, you know tamil nadu which iconic stadium was recently named after sachin tendulkar on his 50th birthday on the 24th of april sharja united arab emirates you know what the united arab emirates has seven amirat amirat or imarat what is it amirat or imarat seven kingdoms seven kingdoms you must have heard of a place called abu dhabi this is also the capital so abu dhabi is the largest then there is a amirat called dubai which is the most populous then a place called um al kuwain then a place called ras al khaima then Mm, what do we do? Fujaira, Fujaira, Sharja. There is one more. Something else is missing. What is missing? Ah, Ajman, Ajman. Okay. i usually keep track of all these things are very important guys yeah these guys are very important for us okay for india as a country with this um, this country is pretty important so sharja is a kingdom as well as also the name of the biggest city there basically okay now um abu dhabi is the capital of the uae united arab emirates the raja of abu dhabi is also the raja of the country remember this this abu dhabi is ruled by the al nahyan family al nahyan family n a h dubai al maktoum so whoever is the raja of the sultan of abu dhabi called amir okay whoever is a sultan of abu dhabi by default becomes the president of the country zayed currently it is um, um, you know Z uh, mohammed bin zayed mohammed bin zayed al nahyan and whoever is a ruler of dubai automatically becomes the vice president and the prime minister of the country currently it is mohammed rashid mohammed bin rashid al maktoum don't worry yeah Sharjah is ruled by just one more. What's the name of the country? Yeah. What's the name of the kingdom? Al Qasimi. Al Qasimi. So three kingdoms I have given you. Three kingdoms. It's fun to learn. Trust me. Yeah. It's fun to learn because see, learning makes us 
comfortable, confident. I usually, um, you know, I, I believe as a teacher that, you know, I, you know, I should push you to work harder because your future is dependent on learning. So if you learn, if you make learning a part of your normal life, it will become that much more easier to sustain that, you know, hobby of reading, learning. Okay. So I guess it's entirely up to you. Okay. The state of the world's population report titled 8 billion lives, infinite possibilities was released by the United Nations uh, Population Fund, Population Fund, you know, it's called Population Fund, UNFPA, uh, United Nations Population Fund, which um, comes under the UNGA. I'm not interested in the United Nations Population Fund, I'm interested in, in UNGA, United Nations, in short, UNGA, you could write this. Okay, you could write this. Um, what is that? Only UN, only UN principal organ to have all members to have all members. at par at par means there is no extra power to any particular okay next see if you look at the united nations security council the security council has five permanent members five permanent members and not ten non-permanent members okay non-permanent members now if you look at pm five permanent members they have veto powers they have veto powers but when a country is a member of the un ga general assembly no one has a veto. Everyone is treated equally. The small country of Tuvalu is as good as the country of the United States, Japan, Russia, everyone else. Okay. Now, one more thing. The General Assembly has all members of the UN as its members. So, currently 193 members and plus two observers. Not two observers. Who are these two observers? One is the Vatican. Second is Palestine. Palestine. Vatican and Palestine. Hmm. You could also write UNGA president. UNGA Anga, it's called Unga, Unga. UNGA President, current president for 2023 is Kasaba Korasi. Okay. Korasi of Hungary. Of Hungary. Kasaba Korosi. Hungary. Okay, so learning is so much fun, huh? UN Secretariat comes comprises the office of the UN Secretary General. Who is the current UN Secretary General? Antonio Guterres. You can write with a single T, double R also, no half. He from he is from Portugal. Portugal. Okay. So that should be fine. See, the UN comprises six principal organs. One is this. Number one is this. Number two is this. In this case, number three. I'm not talk, going by numbers. I'm just giving you. So, okay, there are three here. Then fourth is the trusteeship council. What is this? Trusteeship council. At the time the UN was set up in 1949, 45, a lot of countries slowly became independent. And because they did not have much of a guidance, especially the small kingdom, small you know, island nations, everything, they didn't have much of guidance. The UN took them under its wings. So they were in the trusteeship of the UN itself. Okay. So trusteeship council. Then fifth one is ECOSOC, Economic and Social Council. Economic and Social Council. Economic and Social Council. And the sixth one is the International Court of Justice. 
इंटरनेशनल कोड ऑफ जस्टिस द इंटरनेशनल कोड ऑफ जस्टिस ठीक है ओके सी द ओनली यूएन बॉडी हेडक्वार्टर्ड आउटसाइड न्यूयॉर्क इज आईसीजे इंटरनेशनल कोड ऑफ जस्टिस which is in the hague netherlands the netherlands who among the following persons was appointed chairperson of nascom for 23 24 what is nascom national association of software and service companies national association of software and service companies national association of software and service companies so Who is the new chairperson? Anant Maheshwari. You could write MD and CEO of Microsoft India. Not MD. They have this position called President. Not MD. President and CEO of Microsoft India. Microsoft India. Microsoft India. Then. Rajesh Nambiar, uh, you don't require this anyway. He is a vice chairperson, vice chairperson of NASCOM. Dev Jani Ghosh, yes, this is important. President of NASCOM, president of NASCOM. Now, why is a vice chairperson? Because these guys change every year. But the president of the NASCOM does not change for a long time. Okay, in the case of uh, you know uh, Dev Jani Ghosh, she has been around for some time now. Kriti Kriti Vasan, new CEO of TCS, TCS. C Vijay Kumar, HCL Technologies CEO, HCL Technologies CEO. Chal. The Supreme Court of India reminded governors of their responsibility to clear bills passed by their state assemblies as soon as possible under Article Two Hundred of the Constitution. Some of these, um, you know, uh, governors have become uh, pretty controversial. Like you have this uh, governor in Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Sundar Rajan, who's the state government of Telangana says is sitting on their important important bills without signing them. That's also the case with the, you know, that's also something that's happening in uh, Tamil Nadu where the governor is uh, R N Ravi, Ravi Ravindra Ravi, Ravindra Narayan Ravi, or R N Ravi say, you know. as um, been accused by the state government of sitting on important bills without signing basically so the tamil nadu government had gone to the supreme court and asked uh, that supreme court should put pressure on governors to expedite signing of bills not not much has changed what about these articles article 324 election commission of india it talks of the setting up of an election commission of india election commission of india article 143 of the constitution of india you know um, the president under this the president of india president of india can seek advice can seek advice of supreme court of india yes Under Article One Forty Three, the President of India can seek advice of the President of, sorry, of the Supreme Court of India. Yeah, see, the Babri Masjid issue was referred by the President to SCI long back. One Forty Eight. Uh, yes, this article says that there shall be a Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Auditor. Okay, let me write in full. Auditor General of India, A U D I T O R. Auditor General of India, Comptroller and Auditor General of India. Okay, who is this guy? He is the highest audit officer of the government of India. The books of accounts of all ministries, all departments, all public sector units. and sometimes private companies also are audited by this office or officer basically hmm? 76 um 
relates to the office of attorney general of india attorney attorney means lawyer attorney general of india hmm highest legal officer of india highest legal officer of government of india highest legal officer of government of india you know when we talk talk about highest legal officer he represents um the government of india in all courts all courts so he is a lawyer for the government of india who is the current attorney general r venkatramani r venkatrami and cag is um, girish chandra murmu girish chandra murmu m u r m u girish chandra murmu yeah. price cap coalition recently agreed on the price cap of 60 dollars per barrel of exports of russian oil which is the following constitutes a pcc means no country shall buy russian oil at more than 60 dollars per barrel how many liters is barrel 159 liters see the, the 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 volume of barrel changes between industry between industries but in the oil industry it's 159 liters 159 liters okay now uh, is india abiding this abiding by this no not many in fact except for a handful of countries no one is abiding by this the idea behind this ceiling is that Ch russia should not get more money for selling its oil which would see this money would be used to fund its military adventure in ukraine that's the idea um it says european union which has 27 members european union has 27 members g7 group of 7 then australia so 27 7 34 plus 135 countries are members of the price cap coalition what about au african union african union 55 countries 55 countries the wagner group is a private russian military organization see this is um, a very private company okay it was it is start it was started by evgeny prigozhin who is this guy he is said to be the personal chef of russian president vladimir putin yes he started this company these are soldiers for hire soldiers for hire some of the world's most ruthless you know um mercenaries m e r c e n e r i e s mercenaries are those who are willing to offer their services for paisa now these are guys who are waging the war on behalf of russia in certain critical parts of ukraine like um, you know uh, where do they get the soldiers from russia has lost about 2 lakh soldiers in the current ukraine conflict so they are running short on manpower and uh, apart from the government mobilizing people in russia the wagner group has the power to go to you know has the mandate you know they are allowed to do this to go to prisons different jails in india in, in sorry in russia and where they offer military you know okay guys let's say they offer me i am bharat okay they say okay bharat you are serving a jail sentence for about 15 years okay we can um, we offer you deal you fight for us you fight for us for 6 months you fight for us and after that we will give you freedom with a bunch of you know with a bundle of money what sounds nice this sounds nice na freedom instead of you you serve 5 years another 15 years to go you fight for us we will offer you freedom after this and after that at this time of leaving the organization after 6 months of service we will give you paisa also so it sounds very interesting actually that's how the wagner group operates not just in ukraine russia it operates in large number of countries in africa mali mauritania chad you know plenty of countries my friends you see the words there you know it's their um, what is it it's their logo 
this is a logo and you see this logo in talwars and um, this is the russian full name it means uh, what is it organization organization wagnera that's local name basically so this means blood this is their motto blood um is that i am not very sure yeah blood honor motherland courage i follow these kinds of organizations on a daily basis because they are running the world my friends so th this is the logo you can see this yeah it is all russian blood honor motherland courage these are the four words in their motto that's how they pump people up to fight for russia in a first which three nations recently formed a trilateral group to deepen regional relations and held around the political concentrations everywhere india is doing this my friends we are building alliances which is very good for us yeah uh three countries armenia iran and of course india here hmm? i'll just stick to this particular place um iran's um, a little about iran iran is a pretty large country my friends iran's capital is tehran iran's capital is tehran then it's uh, iran's capital is tehran the president Ibrahim Raisi Ibrahim Raisi should be fine here the currency since i mentioned currency i put a semicolon there chalo koi baat nahi real it's also called toman it's also called toman okay so armenia ha ye hai armenia it is the world's first christian country yes the world's first christian country armenia's capital you can see here erevan the prime minister is nikol nikol pashinyan and the currency is uh, armenian na dram i think what is it uh, i guess it's dram okay dram i'll correct myself if i'm if i'm wrong is it dram or lari it's dram georgia is lari it's dram hmm azerbaijan it is manat anyway chalo koi baat nahi yahan se chalte hain let's go from here One billion meals endowment campaign has been launched by Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates. That is the Prime Minister of. See this guy. We said Al Maktoum rules which part? Yeah, Dubai. So the King of Dubai is also the Vice President and the Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates. just to bring in a little more too many kings we have learnt like you know qatar's ruler is tamim al thani don't write this too much of confusion so let's write this um um capital doha doha 2030 asian games oman muscat kuwait kuwait city Kuwait. See, Kuwait. We say Kuwait. Kuwait city will be there, and of course, Riyadh is uh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, and it is going to host the twenty thirty four Asian Games. Twenty thirty four Asian Games. Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid tributes to Bashveshwara on his birthday anniversary. Choose the correct statements regarding Sant Bashveshwara. Uh, he was a 12th century poet and was born in Karnataka yes he was known for his social re religious reforms and the lingayat movement in south india yeah uh, almost everything was centered around bhagwan shiv bhagwan shiv he developed an inspired a new devotional movement called veer shaivas fair 
See, Shaivite relates to Bhagwan Shiv. Vaishnavite relates to Bhagwan Vishnu. Now, you know, this statue is in a place, this is 108 feet tall. Yes. Where is this? This is in Basava Kalyan. It's in Karnataka. Basava Kalyan, Karnataka, North Karnataka. North, very North Karnataka. Basava Kalyan. Yes. It's a small town. That's where you will find this statue. He, he preached brotherhood and he preached everything without discrimination. He said that the, you know all the teachings are without you know are for all people. Uh, we shall not discriminate against each other on the basis of caste, religion, whatever else, basically. Okay. And um, he was also called Bhakti Bhandar. That was his nickname. Bhakti Bhandar. One word. So he was a treasurer, treasure of you know uh, devotion, treasure of treasure of devotion. He was a deeply devoted man. He was deeply devoted to Bhagwan Shiv. Okay, Chal. Which country blocked the Microsoft Activision deal over cloud gaming concerns? So you know, cloud gaming here relates to it's Microsoft is this world's largest software company, my friend, software maker. Activision is an American gaming company. Okay, now. The issue here is cloud gaming. What is cloud gaming? Normally, let's say there is this video game console. Okay, I am playing here, sitting here. I am playing this. I should be able to access other titles which are other than manufactured by this company. So the owner of this gaming console. Okay, but the problem is that um, UK has said that maybe microsoft will not allow other companies to you know to be able to sell to microsoft you know microsoft gaming stuff like you know you have xbox microsoft makes xbox these kinds of things are called consoles playing consoles like you have sony playstation sony playstation there is a company called nintendo is it? Nintendo. They make V. It's pronounced V. Hmm. So, um, Microsoft has said we are going to allow everyone, but there are concerns. You know, if tomorrow other companies are not able to sell to Xbox users, you know, um, then it will become a kind of monopoly. It will not offer consumers choice. It will not offer consumers choice. So there is this entire thing about you know how this deal will work out. If by the way, do you know about I, I'm sure you know the name of the CEO of Microsoft? It is Satya Narayana Nadella. Satya Narayana Nadella. He's a both he's both chairman and CEO. And um, this company is headquartered in a place called Redmond in Washington. Redmond, Washington, United States. It's an American company. Okay. It's the world's largest software company. Activision. Yeah. Activision is also an American gaming company. And um, it is headquartered in a place called Santa Monica, California. Santa Monica is a small town in the American state of California. Okay. And... Um, its CEO is Bobby Kotick. Bobby Kotick. Bobby Kotick. So, Bobby Kotick, that's a CEO. Now, if Microsoft's deal, this has been approved in the US, it's a $69 billion deal, $68.7 billion. Microsoft is paying 68.7 billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a turnover of close to a little low under the turnover of in Reliance Industries. So Microsoft is paying this much to this company, but some block, you know, some kind of a hurdle has come in Britain. But otherwise, most other countries in the world have approved the deal. And um, if 
Microsoft acquires Activision, it will become a part of Activision will become a part of Microsoft Gaming, G A M I N G. It's a small subdivision, and Microsoft Gaming will become the third largest gaming company in the world. The largest is a Chinese company called Tencent. You have heard of this company, Tencent. Tencent owns. You must be familiar with WeChat. Yeah, Tencent owns WeChat. I just like our WhatsApp basically. Okay, WeChat, and um, second company is Sony. Sony Gaming, Tencent Gaming, and then Microsoft Gaming. Sorry, Tencent, Sony, and Microsoft. For now, the deal is on hold. UK is it's going to be a very long battle. Let's see how it works out. Okay. Which country will host the Quad Summit on twenty fourth May, twenty twenty three? Quad has four members. It's a quadrilateral security dialogue. That's what Quad is. Um, the four countries are the first four mentioned one: United States, India, Australia, and Japan. And Australia is going to host this. Okay, will not go part in this. Which team was crowned champion of the twenty twenty three Super Cup football tournament? Odisha Football FC Football Club. So you could write this. It was held in. Uh, it was held in two places. One, um, Kori Court. You must be familiar with this Kerala town of Kori Court. You can call it Koji Court. It doesn't matter. Okay. And there is another town called Manjeri. What is it? Manjeri. Both are in Kerala. Manjeri. Kori Court and Manjeri. Then. Winner, Odisha Football Club. Runner-up, Bengaluru Football Club. Runner-up, Bengaluru Football Club. Last year it was won by Football Club Goa, but they lost this time. So winner, Odisha. Runner-up, what is this guy? Uh, uh, team, uh, Bengaluru, and player of the tournament. Player of the tournament, Diego Mauricio. Of Odisha FC, Odisha FC. Diego Mauricio. I think that should be it. Yeah. Thank you. That's all from me, Bharat C. Jain. Have a lot of fun. Thank you for being here. And remember, next week I'll tell you the story of Sudan. Thank you for being here. Stay curious.